As we begin to make our way into the dead of a new winter, I thought I'd share a few strange and spooky stories sent to me by our listeners. So bring the dog and cat in, lock your doors, and throw another log on that fire. Cause tonight, it's storytelling time. Story 1 Late one night while my wife and I were in bed, we awoke to the sound of furniture sliding around the attic. Something we're not quite used to hearing, given we live alone in a rural part of Oregon and in the dead of winter, too. At first, we assumed it was the ice sliding off the tin roof. But when we began to hear footsteps, we knew this was different. Years ago, some raccoons got inside the attic from the only window up there, but since then we fixed the broken screen on it and kept it closed. Other than the occasional trip up there to grab holiday decorations, we never really had a reason to be up there, and neither should anything or anyone else. Well, we got up to investigate, and that's when it got real quiet. The wind outside only added an extra layer of eeriness in that dark two-story home. The most recent winter storm had dumped several inches of snow on the property, and at a time when most animals would be hunkering down somewhere, the noises in the attic were especially odd. Well, I grabbed my baseball bat that I kept behind the closet door, along with the flashlight, while my wife followed closely behind, making our way down the hallway. We flickered on the overhead lights and slowly pulled on the rope that would lower the old wooden stair steps. Now there was a small light up there in the attic, but you actually had to go up there and turn it on. As the ladder rested at our feet, we both stared into the dark void of that space dreading having to go up there and investigate. As I slowly climbed the rungs, I remember my wife growing anxious, showering me with caution. Once at the top, my light carved its way through the darkness of the attic, landing on several old boxes and furniture, and finally on the attic window itself. It was halfway ajar, Definitely not how we had left it. On top of that, none of the items in that small space seemed to be disturbed. All that ruckus and nothing to show for it. Very odd, I thought. You're probably wondering, just how big is the attic? The A-framed, 612 pitch space sits on top of our two-bedroom home. I suppose if you put the time and money into it, you could technically convert the attic space into an extra guest room or whatever, but most anyone who ventures on up there would have to slouch to get around. Well, after shutting and locking the window, I moved from box to box and peered behind some old bookshelves. I checked in between the studs and the rafters. Still nothing. As my wife continued asking if I had seen anything, I heard a very subtle squeaking noise coming from the furthest corner of the room. Even with my flashlight aimed directly at it, I still couldn't illuminate the dark mass that I was now looking at. It was about five and a half feet tall and probably around two to three feet in width. It had a weird shape to it almost like that of a turnip. In that darkness, I saw no distinguishable features that would lead me to believe it was anything human or animal. That's when the chills came, and I found myself frozen with fear as I continued to analyze and try to make sense of the bizarre sight. Whatever it was, was something I didn't want in my home. 
So I slowly backed up to the window, unlocked and reopened it. God forbid that thing, whatever it was, is trapped up there, and who knows what sort of can of worms that would open. As I crouched my way back to the staircase, I heard that squeaking sound again, like something in serious need of WD-40. And that's when it moved. And it moved like jello would. It was really odd, and I'd never seen anything like it. Well, that was more than enough to get me the hell out of there. My poor wife must have been petrified watching my reaction as I leaped down from the attic and pushed the stairs back up into the dark space. As I tried explaining to my wife what I had just seen, we both heard it again. The sound of movement began at the far end of the attic and ultimately ending at where the window was before going quiet again. My thought was that it had left. For the remainder of the night, we stayed up listening for any more noises in that attic, but didn't hear a peep after that. My wife and I had the idea of checking the snow for prints to see what we were dealing with, and when we didn't see any prints, we assumed it must have entered the attic through one of the nearby trees that surrounded our home. Your guess is as good as ours as to what this creature could have been. But the fact that it was able to forcibly open the attic window and leave no footprints behind is mind-boggling. If any of your listeners have any idea what it could be, I'd like to hear from them. Also, I fortified the window with extra locks the following day so we can avoid another repeat of what happened on that dark and stormy winter night. Thanks for sharing our story. The Flemings. Story 2 Early one morning, I got up to make coffee before work at 6 a.m. I remember glancing out my kitchen window only to see a child frolicking through a blanket of cold February fog. Sounds normal enough, right? Wrong. I live alone with my five-year-old cat Smokey, a sensitive little gray tabby that was more human than he was cat. Best roommate ever, I should add. The child who appeared to be wearing a white button-up collared shirt and dark slacks seemed unusually dressed for the random occasion of being out in 30 degree temperatures. My first thoughts were, do I have company? But upon stepping out the front door, I was met with silence. I should add that my nearest neighbor lives about a half a mile from me, and he has no children. So who was this kid? And why was he out there? At the furthest edge of the field was a curtain of trees that separated my property from privately owned farmland that was protected by an electric fence. This was to keep his livestock from escaping and to keep predators out. Mountain lions were also an issue in the past and if any parent knew this they sure as hell wouldn't let their kids running amuck all alone out there. Well, as you might imagine, I called it in. If someone's child was missing, I couldn't sit by idle and do nothing. Sheriff's department stated that nobody had reported a child missing. So after a bit, we all assumed the child belonged to a family that must have been traveling through. But if there were any vehicles that entered my property, I would have heard. The gravel road would have demonstrated that, as it does every time somebody comes down my road. But this was different. The child was gone as quickly as he appeared, almost ghost-like, now that I think about it. Now here's where things get a little eerie. I returned home from work that night only to find an empty house. 
Smokey somehow had vanished. I left the house that morning as Smokey was eating his favorite kibble. That was the last image I had of him. I spent a week searching every crevice in my small manufacture home, thinking maybe he'd fallen ill or hit somewhere, as they sometimes do. That was nearly a year ago now. As you might imagine, I was devastated by this, but learned to accept what had happened and that it was out of my control. Smokey was an indoor cat only, and even when presented with the opportunity to go outside, he never did. He preferred to sit at the doorway and stare out instead. He was that kind of cat that would never leave the home, even if you left all the windows and doors wide open. So that brings me to my next thought. Could there be a connection between the mysterious child and my missing cat? Did the child somehow break into my secured home while I was out at work, only to steal Smokey, who usually hid from company and strangers? Logic tells me otherwise, but when you have one strange event that directly follows another, I can't help but wonder if it's anything other than a coincidence. I know you've done videos in the past about missing pets, so I thought I'd reach out about mine. Happy New Year to you, Rusty, and thanks. J.B. Palmer Story 3 I'm an ex-geologist, and several years ago, I was mapping one winter on the tundra in northern Quebec, approximately 150 to 200 kilometers from the nearest town, and I mean in the middle of nowhere. No cabins, no ATV routes, no trails, nothing. Well, my field partner and I were walking along when he flipped a rock with his foot, just a random rock out of millions, when a little piece of paper flies up from underneath it and gets caught by the wind. He turns to me and we both go, what the bleep, because there should be no paper just randomly there. I track down the paper and find that it's folded. I open it up and see that it's a note with the words, quote, J-E-T-A-I-M-E, -E, on it with a drawn heart. Upon seeing this, I literally got chills up and down my spine, because the improbability of it floating all the way up here, being undamaged by the elements, and then us finding it randomly, is just mind-blowing. Well, the whole way back that evening, we kept hearing what sounded like ice and rock shifting and sliding behind us as if we were being trailed. And it sounded close, but just far enough out of view that we could never really see where it was coming from. I doubt this had anything to do with that bizarre note, but thought I'd mention it anyway. The words or letters didn't make a lick of sense to us, even after googling it. But it does look French. As for the heart drawn around the letters, this may have been somebody's love note. But again, all the way out here in the middle of nowhere, and not a single sign of damage either. Amazing. Now, I'm not a religious man, or superstitious by any means, but it felt like the universe or some higher power just reached out and poked me in the chest. That's it. I thought I'd share that with ya. Thank you. Tom and Scott Story 4 
Hello, Rusty. I've got two strange experiences I'd like to share with you. Here's the first. This past winter, I hiked a very high peak with a buddy of mine and camped out overnight. Everything was fine the first day we were there. We had a great night's sleep and woke up early to hike back to the parking area. On the way back down the trail, my friend and I noticed someone else had been hiking as well. About a mile after walking, I stopped and saw my full name, first and last, was drawn into the snow on the side of a footpath. Well, I sure as hell didn't do that and neither did my friend. It was snowing a bit throughout the night, and if it was drawn the day before, well, the snow would have covered it up. We got a bit freaked out and decided to hustle back to our car so we could get out of there. We finally got back to the parking area, and I went to sign myself out of the registry book. When I turned the page to where I had signed in the previous day, I saw that someone else had scribbled out all my information so you couldn't read it anymore. No one else had signed into the book besides myself for three days. I will not be going back there. And here's the next experience I had. A few days after Christmas of 2018, my family and I went to gather up all our Christmas decorations before the next big snow. We live at the end of a quiet rural street in South Dakota, and other than the mailman, we just don't see many folks come down this far. Well, as we went to gather up some of the larger decorations that we had placed on our roof, including a seven-foot snowman, and a large wooden Santa with reindeer. Well, we saw that they had vanished. Well, this had us all scratching our heads, especially with the Santa and the reindeer decorations, which weighed about 75 pounds. There's no way our two young children could have taken it, and it's hard to imagine a storm having anything to do with it. And we had just seen them the day before as well. A few months go by, and we find them at the very back end of the property, which is around 40 acres in size. They were found sitting neatly, placed in a thick group of trees. No damage. No other sign anyone was there. Just the snowmen and the Santa decorations, exactly how we remembered them from last Christmas. Well, that really blew our minds, and to this day, we still talk about it. Anyway, thank you for sharing my experiences with your listeners, and Happy New Year to ya. Lance K. And there you have it. As those colder months move in, you can bet there will be plenty more odd and unusual winter wilderness stories headed your way. In the meantime, I'll be working on a new volume of National Park Disappearances, as well as a new set of strange trucker experiences. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, I hope you're all making the best of the new year. And you'll hear from me soon. Good night.